Now that you have a message, a website, and a blog, you are ready to start disseminating your message. In order to do so effectively, you will need to be able to package your message into different kinds of formats for different web spaces. Three basic social media sites that every online campaign should incorporate are Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Establishing a presence on each of these sites allows your brand to interface with different kinds of users. It is also a simple way of improving your searchability through Google and other search engines. Most web pages include a string of chiclets at the bottom of the page, icons that link directly to an organization's Facebook page, Twitter feed, YouTube channel, or other social media site. Pinterest, Flickr, and LinkedIn are other popular chiclet links. The chiclets you decide to incorporate into your website design will depend on the exact nature of your website. If you are promoting a hip-hop band, a YouTube channel would be essential, whereas if you are promoting yourself as a professional consultant, a link, in, a link to your LinkedIn page might be more valuable. In general, however, the more such sites you utilize, the easier it will be for different kinds of web surfers to find your content, and the more likely it will be that you supply the kind of content that will resonate with the people who see it. Once you have created accounts and uploaded content onto these sites, they can work in collaboration with your website to define and disseminate your message. As you develop accounts with different media sites to supplement the message of your website, your string of chiclets will begin to lengthen and the connectivity of your brand will improve. Throughout this process, it is important to keep in mind that your presence on each of these sites represents a single entity, your brand. Although different social media hubs have different aesthetic and professional standards, your branding will be more effective if you manage to stay on message throughout the various incarnations of your online identity. Individual people tend to accumulate social media profiles in a haphazard way, according to various whims and intentions that reflect a history of online experimentation and half-hearted salvos. When you are a brand, however, all of your online activity is focused around a single purpose and a single collection of signifiers. Whether the brand appears on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or any of a million other sites, its name, catchphrase, and logo are consistently recognizable as is its general way of expressing itself, of presenting information, and of interacting with the world. For the purposes of this class, I would recommend using your brand's website as a template for every other online appearance of your brand. Try matching the color scheme, the style of self-presentation, and specific images or graphic designs, and take a good profile pic for use on all of your sites. Online writers developing content for different sites should also practice repurposing content from their website and blog for use on these other sites. Repurposing content is a fancy way of saying that you are taking what you said in one place and reworking it so that it fits into a different context. As we talk about writing for different kinds of websites, it is important to keep in mind that each different online space has its own set of standards regarding what pops and what fizzles. The same words that make a riveting blog would make an extremely tedious Facebook status update, or sound stiffly informal if read into a webcam for a YouTube video, or get cut off after 140 characters if it were a Twitter post. This means that at the same time that consistency and recognizability are imperative to developing an impactful online presence, writing for social media requires verbal flexibility and an ear for what sounds right in a given online space. Facebook has become a predominant space in the online environment and a critical tool for marketers, publicists, and activists seeking to disseminate their messages. The keys to the site's success are its flexibility, it hosts many different forms of content, video, audio, instant messages, photo, etc., and connectivity, contacts branch off into one another in a way that situates every Facebook user within a worldwide network of users. These are the reasons that people like Facebook. But the reason people love Facebook is because of the way it prioritizes basic human principles, the drive for self-expression, and the interrelationship of a complex human community. When you publish a website, it is possible to use it as a kind of wall between yourself and the rest of the online community, a kind of mask that presents an impenetrable front to the online world. The essence of Facebook, however, is interconnectivity. A Facebook page is not something you just put out there, it is something that you do. It is your brand in action talking, thinking, asking, responding, joking, reminiscing, and doing all the things that everyone does on a daily basis. It is your brand being human, vulnerable, even fallible. This personal touch is the essence of online marketing in general, and of Facebook in particular, and it has rewritten the old rules about how a brand should interact with the public. Rather than trying to muffle criticism, innovative brands use social media to listen to feedback from the online community and to adapt their business model in response to the public's concerns. Following four basic guidelines can help you maximize the value of Facebook as a free advertising tool. 
Number one, be your face. A person's face is a metaphor for their identity as a whole. Facebook is called Facebook because it emphasizes individual identity. The entire model of Facebook is built around individual users expressing themselves, declaring their opinions, sharing their personal enthusiasms, and situating themselves in the center of a vast web of other personalities. Facebook is designed to appeal to a basic level of narcissistic self-promotion, and it is partly the affinities of millennials for this form of communication that has caused them to be accused of self-centeredness. In the 20th century, self-centeredness had been determined to be a bad thing as a result of various cultural attitudes. In the, first, in the 21st century, however, research on the importance of perceived self-interest as a basic lever of evolutionary psychology and organization of behavior has led to the reassessment of self-centeredness as a powerful motivational force for constructive social development. Facebook captures the power of individualism, and to use it effectively, a brand has to figure out a way to become a personality. Personalities can be faked, indeed they always are to some extent, but the easiest and most meaningful way to express your brand's personality is to make it consistent with your own. Now, unless you are a confessional poet, your brand's personality and your own are two separate entities. In the same way that you show a different face at work from the one you show at home, your brand's Facebook page should not be your own personal Facebook page. In the same way, however, that you are more likely to succeed in a career whose demands are consistent with your own sense of your own personality, your brand's personality will be more convincing and easier to incarnate if it aligns in key respects with your own personality. Try adapting the content from your website into a more casual, more conversational tone of voice. Imagine how you speak to your co-workers in a boardroom. This will generally be the voice of your website. To make the transition to writing for Facebook, imagine that you are continuing the same conversation with your co-workers, only this time around the water cooler. Now you can express yourself more naturally, use slang and pop culture references, and even tell jokes. Which brings us to the second point, the social network. The water cooler analogy is also appropriate because whereas boardroom speeches or web page content tend to take the form of a monologue, the after hours chat is more likely to take the form of a dialogue, a back and forth between various parties that is characterized by mutuality and reciprocity. You say something, I say something that builds on what you said, a third person contributes a fresh perspective, and a phenomenon emerges that is greater than the sum of its parts. Individual personalities come together to transform themselves and the world by combining their perspectives into a new, unforeseen, conceptual pattern. A successful Facebook persona is one that crafts a unique and vivid online personality, not for its own sake, but for the purpose of engaging a community of other users. The more engagement your Facebook posts inspire, the more views, likes, shares, and comments your posts rack up, the more your content will be favored by the algorithm that Facebook uses to determine whose posts enjoy the most visibility. At the same time, if you post content that does not engage audiences, your algorithmic ranking gets downgraded, so it is necessary to fine-tune each post for maximum engagement. The best technique for engaging a Facebook audience is to provoke a conversation. Don't just state your comment, ask a question, ask for advice, solicit feedback, and use any other techniques you can think of to start that conversation. Think of your Facebook posts as springboards for discussion rather than as declarative statements. At the same time, once you have started a conversation, keep up your end. No one wants to start a conversation with someone who expresses no interest in talking back. The gears of Facebook are powered by the force of reciprocity. If you don't respond to people who post comments on your Facebook page or your blog or your YouTube channel, etc., you risk alienating the very people who are most likely to become your fans and allies. Your responses to comments should validate the commentator's point of view, and a truly savvy brand may even adjust its message to bring it into conformity with any coterie of Facebook friends they may be lucky enough to attract. These people are your target audience, and if you can cultivate their loyalty, they will be a powerful source of support and expertise. Ultimately, the most successful Facebook pages are ones in which the curator of the page becomes a facilitator to a conversation rather than a primary participant. If you can supply a meeting place for people with a similar interest, your Facebook page can become a hub for information, gossip, perspectives, and networking opportunities. In this way, a brand's online personality can become a central part of people's lives and a node of interpersonal community. Number three, the daily novelty. A brand's website usually expresses a sense of permanence, reliability, and recognizability. Renovations and redesigns of a brand's central website are usually rare and gradual. 
A brand's Facebook page, however, is an online forum in which the brand managers can experiment with new approaches to customer engagement, new ways of marketing themselves, and different strategies for embedding, embedding their brand's identity within an ever-shifting webscape of rising and falling trends. A Facebook page is a kind of open diary in which a brand can contemplate the question of its own existence, fantasize about alternative possibilities, and spin out strange and non-intuitive threads of association. Used effectively, an active Facebook profile can encourage a brand to keep from fossilizing in its own self-understanding by staying hip and fresh. The algorithms used by Facebook and Google both place a premium on the connectivity of a search term. The more connected a term is, the more likely it will be to appear on users' screens. Facebook posts are a valuable opportunity to associate your brand with other terms that are attracting attention. If a brand can forge connections between itself and popular search terms, it has the potential to reach out to new audiences who will find out about the brand through the chain of association. At the same time, referring to the hot topics of the hour keeps a brand's identity current by assuring that it rubs shoulders with the memes that symbolize what is happening now. Likewise, a brand can also use Facebook's daily newness to communicate that they are up to date with the latest developments in their field or business. Posting links to breaking news articles or new research findings that relate to your brand shows readers that your brand is curious, forward-thinking, and in the know. The most important watchword for Facebook page curators is diversity. Post a mixture of different media, videos, photos, links, etc., and also include a mixture of shared and original material. For marketing purposes, a Facebook page should strive for a mixture of information and entertainment. Too much of either one will turn off many users. Another balance that should be arrived at is an appropriate blend of items that are explicitly connected to your brand's key message and items that stray farther afield. On the one hand, a brand's Facebook page needs to stay on message and be very clear about what it is about. On the other hand, if you can make up an excuse to connect your brand's identity with, with whatever the rising trend of the daily memescape ha happens to be on any particular day, it might be worth doing, even if it re represents a wide associational leap. And finally, number four, just do it. The most important rule of Facebook is simple. Leap in and stay in. When marketers think of a Facebook page as something they set up and walk away from, they squander an opportunity to reach out to new audiences and even to learn from them. Facebook page upkeep should be part of a regular schedule of an organization's activities. If you are the only person in your organization, find 10 minutes in your daily routine to post con content to your Facebook page and to interact with anyone who may have commented on your page. You don't want to go too crazy. Posting too much content can be as bad, as bad for your algorithm as not posting enough. An optimal routine seems to be four or five posts per week. Each post should be an opportunity to think about your brand identity from new perspectives and in light of the latest cultural developments. Taking advantage of this opportunity can help you embed your brand more deeply into your audience's mental space. Like the internet, the brain's algorithms also privilege links that get a lot of traffic and that are widely connected to other prominent nodes. Facebook offers a brand a chance to become a part of people's lives in a way that is as interconnected, as reciprocal, and as personal as their relationships with their other Facebook friends. The benefits for a brand of achieving this kind of status among their Facebook audience are incalculable, but such loyalty doesn't happen overnight, and it doesn't happen by itself. It is the result of, of patience, persistence, and sustained effort. The spirit of Facebook is one of creativity, inspiration, and positivity. There is a reason there is no dislike button on Facebook. Facebook audiences express their dislike for something in the most effective and constructive way possible. They simply turn away from it and move on to something else. For the same reason, everyone on Facebook is friends. There are no Facebook enemies. A brand's daily interaction with Facebook is an opportunity, opportunity to dip into the Facebook ethos of friendship, supportiveness, and mutual goodwill. Brands that use Facebook to cultivate these feelings among their target audiences are rewarded with a population of loyal fans, advocates, and customers. Facebook itself is not about selling anything. It's about a more fundamental kind of transaction, schmoozing. As any good business person knows, a good schmooze is more valuable than a sale because it lays a groundwork for a whole future of sales. Whether or not you are literally selling a product, the same principle applies. The more people like your brand, the more likely they are to be persuaded by you, to take action on your behalf, and to share what they know about you with other people. 